Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian Movie Enthusiast, and this is my review of Japanese Summer Double Suicide, a Japanese movie from 1967 that was directed by Nagisa Oshima. Now we have three main characters in this movie, and the beginning of this movie is a little bit odd, so stick with me here, alright? We have a sex-obsessed young woman a suicidal man she meets on the street, and a gun-crazy wannabe gangster are the three main characters here, okay? But these are only three of the irrational oddball anarchists who are trapped inside an kind of under, underground hideaway in Oshima's, I guess you would call it an absurdist portrait of what he deemed to be the death drive of Japanese youth, youth culture. This is kind of the criterion release description of the film. Now, our female girl, lead character, at the start of the movie, get this, guys, okay? Listen to what I'm saying here. She attempts to stop a group of men from, uh, I guess you could say, painting over some graffiti on the street. So you get, you get these workers who show up. They're kind of uh, painting over some graffiti, and she takes offense to this, all right? Now, after this event, she decides to walk to a nearby bridge and throw her underwear into the river, all right? She throws it into the river because apparently she broke up with her boyfriend uh, fairly recently. Now, I don't know what you guys do when you break up with your significant other, but walking to the nearest bridge and throwing your underwear into the ocean or the, the sea, not really the first thing that comes to mind, right? So this movie's, it's a bit odd. <laughs> it's a little bit odd. Uh, in any case, after that, we're soon presented with some uh, multiple visuals of the Japanese flag. You know, like uh, there's a swim team in the river or the sea that's carrying it. There's a marching band mini parade that's that's touting it. And uh, our main character, uh, a girl, encounters some monks who are walking in circles around what appears to be two chalk outlines of dead bodies. And, and these outlines have like an unusual artistic flair about them, almost like a reference to a double suicide. So... What I just told you may seem like total gibberish, but it's, it's what this film presents to you very early on. All this happens in the opening 10 minutes, and it's a very odd opening to a film. And you're kind of like reeling a little bit, like, like what is this movie about? But it, it's more simplistic and, and easy to follow than you might think. And the first time I saw this film, I was a little bit kind of, uh, I found it difficult to follow early on. Trouble figuring out the character motivations and stuff like that. But you just have to focus on what happens after the opening scene. All right. Basically, your watered down plot synopsis is this. You got three main characters run into a band of gangsters who are kind of in the middle of their own personal war. Okay. But there are some culturally specific underlying themes to this film. All right, given the time period in which it was made, you know, this was made in 1967. The Japanese still had, like, the psychological impact of a lost war and the transition period between becoming an economic power. And you can see some of those elements in this film. But I'm certain there's, there's some more Japanese social commentary in this that kind of flies over my head and perhaps international viewers' heads or anyone who wasn't around 60 years ago even in Japan. There are, there are some direct references in this film to the JFK assassination, and they introduce a, a Caucasian gunman character at one point who may have been inspired by Lee Harvey, Harvey Oswald. So there's kind of a lot of political and cultural stuff going on in this film. But I definitely recognized some of the American uh, elements in this, and they also directly interact with the Japanese-specific elements during the second half of the movie, which is pretty interesting to see. So you have this like weird like amalgamation of like different elements in this. You're a little confused early on, but it, it does kind of settle into like the main plot. 
and you have some American cultural elements that are mixed in with the Japanese. But it's it's pretty interesting stuff, this film. It is. I really like the character interaction, and much of this interaction during the middle section occurs during uh, within this like gang's base of operations. You know, it's located in a, kind of like a less traveled area, kind of a decrepit area, and they're trying to figure out their their plan when things go bad. It's pretty good stuff though, because most of this, the people in this movie are a little abnormal. All right, there's a scene where a male lead uh, challenges one of the gang members' ability to kill. So some of these gang, gang members show up, and they're talking like crap, and they're, uh, I don't know, they're kind of, they're fronting in this, right? And the dude calls them out on it. Like, do you even, have you even killed somebody before? Like, if you, have you gone through this process? And you, you can see the, uh, the interaction that results from this. There's uh, a side character who is capable of killing, and, and uh, this film tells his side story, in addition to that, which seems to be driven from the frustrations of a lost war. And then there's this Caucasian guy that I mentioned before, who's on a killing spree. He's like a serial killer. And he's like a gunman who just shoots, shoots, shoots up public places. And this throws the local police force into total chaos. So our main characters hear about this gunman on their television sets, and uh, the male lead in this film actually wants to die. You know, he's like suicidal, so he tries to figure out the gunman's possible location in an attempt to meet him so that the gunman can kill him. So it's this movie at first is like all over the place. There's like a dozen different characters, a dozen different themes, but if you watch it, uh, in you're attentive to it, it's actually pretty interesting stuff. There are a few different genre elements, like uh, there's some thrills and action, uh, but those come kind of later on. This is primarily, I would say, a drama with some shootouts peppered in during the final third. Overall quality of the film is high, solid acting and direction. Uh, you will recognize Kei Sato, who's been in a ton of movies over the years. Like when you rec when you see him in the in the film, you'll recognize him. And Oshima's direction is very impressive as usual. So this movie, it's kind of difficult to describe it. It really is. You go through, you describe the specific things that happen, and like anybody who's listened to you, it's like the, I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. A lot of different things going on here. But it was a very engaging movie to me, even on my second viewing. And uh, it's one of those interesting little new wave Japanese movies from back in the day that hits on a bunch of different, like, themes. And it has some oddball characters who do some oddball stuff. But it's just, like, it's very engaging. And it makes you want to know more of what was happening during that era. So I do actually definitely recommend Japanese Summer Double Suicide, despite the fact that it's really hard to describe the film. <laughs> uh, it's available streaming on the Criterion channel as well as on DVD. And if you're kind of unfamiliar, unfamiliar with this director, this is a good place to start. You know, he made a lot of good movies over the years, and I really need to do like a top 10 list for Oshima, but I would need to like rewatch a lot of his movies from back in the day in order to do it. But I, I, I am going to do it at some point. But from what I remember, this film and a few others like Empire of Passion and Violence at Noon were kind of like on my, uh, on my favorites list from him. So check this movie out. If anything that I said in this discombobulated review is interesting to you, check it out. I, uh, I quite enjoyed it. And as always, folks... I'll see you next time.